So this is going to be just a small disassembly video how to get the HVAC out and these buttons out. I'll be changing both of them to white, so you'll see me removing both. Um, so one will just deal with one video, and then we'll deal with the other one in the other video. Um, everything is already disassembled for the most part, screws and all. I've just kind of laid it out to make this easier to show. Uh, the shift boot, typically just squeeze just from the sides to pull it out. Squeeze and lift on the uh, grommet here at the bottom. Obviously, the shifter is just slightly different from what you'll have. It's just chassis mounted. Then, uh, when you're here, you'll have uh, a screw or two screws actually, right there, one there, and then on the opposite side, there's one as well. You'll remove them and uh, pull up on this and slide it back and it'll lift out uh, both of the window switches will be connected so you'll just reach under and pull the window switch there and underneath there pull them off and that'll come apart and there will be another video later on on the changing the window switches to white as well uh, when you're here uh, the HVAC can come out You'll want to get some pry tools, just uh, an assortment really. Uh, I used this one here, just jam in on the side. These plastic pry tools are just a couple bucks on Amazon. You want to jam in on the side and just kind of ever so gently try to get around it and pull forward. That will dislodge it and bring it out. Now this is saying you do have this bottom mounted one. You know, some guys still have it up here, and for that one, I think you have to remove the top trim and the radio, and then it'll slide out. But uh, so once it pulls forward, there will be four connectors on it. You'll unplug them. Uh, first white connector is a pinch connector, the second white one will have a uh, button to depress on top and has a black lever that slides over this third one here just slides straight out no mechanism to depress or pinch and the uh, last black one there has a uh, pinch that's at the top here where my thumb is and you'll pinch it and pull it and that'll release the HVAC Let's set that aside for now um, from this point on you got four screws to deal with there, there, and then from where you release the HVAC, there'd be one up here, and on the opposite side, there's one as well. That'll release this console, and you'll just pull it forward. Um, if you have the this is called a smoker's package or whatever if, if you still have a cigarette lighter plug um, that'll still be attached so when you pull it out it should be gentle uh, don't rip the wires out they can be tight so just give that a, a little bit of a convince in here mine is just stuck at the bottom there you go and uh, when it slides out you'll want to get the plugs there for the lighter and then also if you have the light that illuminates the ashtray you'll pull that plug here now once you're here um, just flip it over on its back there is uh, two screws here they are Torx remove them I just kind of put these in place so it didn't slide out that's out this these buttons will just slide right out all right uh, next up we'll be at the bench disassembling these for the HVAC once you have it out of the vehicle uh, you just need to turn it around and there is seven 
75. They're really fine. They're around a the perimeter. T, Torx T5, little screws. Um, I got this screwdriver at Harbor Freight. Comes in a little kit with a bunch of fine um, detailed drive bits. I've removed the other six just to kind of spare you watching me do that on video. But there is seven of them here. Once you get it to that point, the face will come off. Just like that. The buttons do stay intact. Um, so you just set this portion aside. And uh, so now you just pretty much need to compare how this looks and what you want to change about it. Uh, this is all sectioned off. So in my case, I'll be changing all of the regular LEDs to a uh, white. The, the cool air, or the, I guess the cool arrow and the red arrow up, the blue arrow down, and they are already uh, blue in color and red in color respectively. So what I'll be doing, I'll be leaving all of the actual indicator lights to show what is on and what is off their actual color which would be green for these um, green also for the auto green for the recirculation auto or manual recirc um, the AC is green and then the windshield defrost and the rear window defrost or orange. I'll be leaving all of those. The main ones I'll be changing are the ones that are inside of these um, protective areas that kind of section off the light and they're all orange currently. I'll be changing them to white, all three of these. These two for the fan, the center one in here for the uh, recirculation, this one here for the auto button and then these three on this side for uh, which way the vents are going to open. This rubber boot just lifts off. And what you're left with is this screen. This is uh, very similar to what's in the cluster. The only difference is uh, it just slides into a couple pinholes. There's a pinhole there and there, and these have pins right there and there, and uh, it just slides in and stays there. Um, similar to the LCD screen in the cluster, there is this fine strip here that is very flimsy. Uh, so when you take this apart, just be very gentle about that when you remove the orange film off of this. There are, let's see, two, four, six, eight, eight LEDs here that sit underneath this thing. Uh, so I'll be changing these to red to match my cluster um, once you're here. You'll... Uh, there's these very small little tab there, and on the opposite side is this tab just like it. You'll just pry up on it very slightly. Same on the other side, and the LCD screen does come apart. Once you're at this point, you'll want to lift the LCD screen itself out of its holder. Now, unlike the uh, cluster LCD, you can't mix this one up. It only sits one way into this holder. Um, and just like the cluster itself, it does have this orange diffuser to make it look orange. This thing itself has a blue tint to it. So set it aside, don't scratch it, be careful with it. You'll want to take this orange film and uh, you'll want to trace this design 
to actually have these hooks on the side. You'll want to trace this into a piece of paper or whatever you choose to use to diffuse this light with if you are doing something other than red. I'll just be using some printer paper. I'll cut this design into it so it will fit back into this holder. And uh, that's pretty much that. So once you're down to this, uh, once you've determined which ones you're gonna change, uh, take good pictures of all of it, close up pictures, that way you can mark polarities on it. Uh, I'll include the pictures I took of mine and the polarities that I, how I marked them. I don't know if all the boards are exactly the same, but this is a, at least a general gist of how it works. I, found, I find it best to just leave it in this contraption uh, as a good place to sit down, as a good place to work on, easier to solder to without having the back just rubbing against the table. Um, so I'm going to put you guys on a time lapse and uh, we'll come back to this when it's done. There's not much to this. If you watch the other video, it's pretty much the same. Put some solder down on all the pads, grab an LED, hold it in place, solder one side of it, and then uh, flip the board around. Give a little pressure on it and then solder the other side. Flip it one more time and then re-solder the original side once again just to make sure that None of the solder will crack over time, and uh, the LED is laying flat on the board. Um, just go through, solder them all in. I did white for all the indicator, red for the LEDs that will sit behind that LCD screen. Um, I did not get the pin out on this one, so I actually just went back to the car, plugged it in, and tested it that way. There is a way to power it off the bench. I just never got the schematic on the wiring on how to power this one. Either way is fine. Um, it's not going to set any codes if you do it in the car either. All right, uh, all the LEDs are changed. I think I missed a little bit at the very end replacing a couple of these LEDs, but um, it'll all be the same, really. Uh, the, I think either somehow I accidentally stopped the time lapse or whatever it happened. Uh, either way, um, you'll get the gist of it based on the video that's there. Um, so, like I mentioned earlier, that orange bit, you want to just trace and cut yourself a new piece to fit in here. screen, place it back inside, and then the clip. Okay, once you got all that up, you can place this in its original spot. There you go. That just drops in. Put this uh, diffuser back in. If you have any 
dust from the uh, auto sensor around here. You can clean that up. Place that across. And uh, put the face back on. something don't force any of this make sure it all goes back together real smooth if something hangs up just pull it back apart see where you're hanging up at all right looks like we're all there just gonna put a couple screws into it just to hold it together and then we'll go to the car and uh, fire it up. Alright, um, I'll put the other screws in off camera when I'm all done but we'll go to the car right now and check this out. Fully reassembled back in the car. I'll show you what this looks like. Right, flip the lights on. There you go. HVAC all white. Buttons white. Screen on the HVAC is red. Everything else is the same. No changes elsewhere. Um, all the indicators still like the same. Um, sport button, everything still works. So it just starts looking a little bit more cohesive. Dim it down. All right. Thanks for watching.